All right, uh, hey guys, this is Hot Tube again. Um, going to be doing the eighth tutorial, and this one is on loops. So, pretty much, what is a loop? Well, as you can see here, it's just pretty much a bit of code that can repeats until you tell it not to repeat, pretty much. So, um, I'm just going to use the example here. Um, while true, so pretty much with while statements, it's um it executes the bit inside while the condition is true so while true this bit will run right and well false well this will never run and this one here if it helps it has um, the same effect as if false type thing right um you can uh, break the loops, like stop them using the break command, right? As you can see here, break while true, um, break, so this will end it, right? So as you can see in the example here, um, here I'll just put it in a project so you can see it in action. And um, like always, we're going to be creating a console application. And the reason why we're using console applications, just in case you're wondering, is so you don't have to worry about all of the other things that you do have to worry about when you use forms, right? Because right now we're just focusing on learning the basics and how everything works. Um, this is post 8, I think. Yep. Post 8. And it's building. All right, so um, just quickly make it example while true. So right line. So this bit here will only run once, right? Because we're going to be breaking the loop right after it. at the very end of the function we're going to put console.readline so we can see the output run once right see it runs once and there's your results see if you didn't have this here then it's just going to go on and on forever and you want to avoid loops like that Uh, another way you can uh, stop it is by using a bool. So we're just going to go y, um, define a boolean. So my bool say equals true. So while my bool, so this is, a, remember, this is the same as equals true, right? So while my bool is equal to true, so dot right line say so this is going to run once here this bit and then let's say you um, decide for some odd reason in the middle of it that you want this is going to be the last loop so you're going to say my my bool equals false but it's not going to break it right there right it's still going to execute the rest of the code so this bit here still runs right and it's just um, so you, you should see um, this bit here running so this will be run once run once and then it will have this value at the end let's make sure it all works right okay and then uh, the next example this is um, while counting. We're going to count to 10 with the while loop. So while, well, first we've got to int count equals 0. So we're going to start counting at 0. So while count is less than or equal to 10. Or if you want to, um, you know, not use less than or equal to, you can just do um, less than 11, which is the same as less than or equal to 10. So this will go from 0 to 10. So we're going to say console.writeLine um, count. Now, right now, it goes on forever. 
So we want to make this value go up. And um, when I type in console plus plus, it's actually a short front shortcut for, I mean, ca uh, count plus plus. It's a shortcut for count equals count plus one. Okay. And you can also do um, count plus equals one or two or whatever, right? So let's run that and zero to ten right there. So um, while while loops aren't exactly the most efficient when you're counting numbers and such, so we're gonna uh, I'm gonna show you how to use a for loop. So with the for loop, we're gonna say for int i or count in this case. We'll use count equals zero. Now this bit here is the first. That's the variable declaration. Now while count, this is the condition check is less than eleven, and then for the increments is in the third part. Count plus plus, right? So for... Okay, well, I'll use count too, because we already have counts declared up there. Right, so for integer count two equals zero. So what happens is when it runs this bit of code, it first declares a variable count two equals zero, and then it checks the condition and finally it goes through the code and then calls this bit here to change the increments or I mean change the value right so in this case we're just going to output the value count two right and notice we don't have to do count plus plus or anything like that right because it executes here and um, this is much more efficient because here it's counting ver this variable three times, whereas it calls this once, twice, and three times, but it doesn't recall them, it just keeps them there so you can e easily access it, right? There's just less calling, variable calling to do, so it's slightly more efficient than the while loop. You won't really notice a difference, but when you're doing a lot of array stuff and so on, you'll notice a difference if you have enough data there. Okay, so um, it's going to count to 10 twice, pretty much. Zero to 10, zero to 10. See, same effects, just one slightly faster. And this one's also more compressed. There's also, um, see this count too? This is not, like, after the for loop, it's disposed, right? This is also good for keeping your memory low, you know, right? See, it doesn't exist, because it only exists during the for loop. That's just the thing to keep in mind. And, um, just, uh, here's an example of, uh, how you can use for loops to output an array. So first we're just going to quickly define this array here, this um, string. And of course there's an error. should have checked this crap. Okay, so, um, yeah. For ints, um, I don't know, i, i for index, right? Int i equals zero, well i is less than what? Alright, anyway, while the string array is less than the length of it, right? This counts how many slots there are the length, right? i plus plus, right? And then we're going to go console that right line string array and we're going to use i as the index right so this is going to loop through it's going to count one two and so and so so it's going to call this var var uh, value this that etc right so let's run that and see what happens right hello everyone my name is none of your business right all right now um, 
this way isn't really the most efficient way of doing it since this array we're not changing it at all right and if you're using large amounts of data this will really add up we're going to define it here as the length or len whatever equals string array dot length now the reason why we're doing this is because every time it goes for the condition it's calling that value like string array dot length and every time this value is called, it's recalculated. So this way, it calls the value, right? Rather than calculating it each time. Now, if you're going to be changing the array while you're doing this, you're going to want to use the actual string dot of length, or the array length, right? So that's going to execute slightly faster, and it's going to have pretty much the same results unless you change it in the middle of it. Like change the size. You can still change the values while you're doing this as well. Okay, and then there's um, having loops within the loops. So I'm just going to quickly make an example here. For int i equals 0 while i is less than, let's say, 10 i plus plus. Right? Now, when you're doing this, make sure that use the correct variables you don't want to get stuck in a never-ending loop right so make sure the conditions are using these variables right a common mistake to do is to use i plus plus right instead of i2 plus plus and i'm looking a bit so uh we're i'm just going to show you the results here you should get it counting 1 to 10 through here, like, you'll see what I mean. So we're going to say i and plus, comma, plus 2, right? And um, you should see the results. Uh, you'll see what I mean, how, the, how it loops within a loop. Right? See the numbers, it goes 9, 1, 2, 3, you know, 0 to 9. Right? That's pretty much how a loop within a loop works, right? Hopefully you get that. Um, yeah, looks like we're done for loops here.